Welcome to the Oasis. My name is Mike, and this is going to be an interesting video as I have two brand new VR headsets from HTC to talk about. We have the HTC Vive Pro 2, which is a high end PC VR headset, and then we have a new standalone VR headset, the HTC Vive Focus 3. Although I will say straight off the bat to set your expectations accordingly that the Vive Focus 3 isn't the Quest 2 competitor that we all wanted and this headset is solely aimed at the business and enterprise market, but I'll be talking more about that later on in the video. Both of these new headsets are being announced today at ViveCon and I was invited to a prior press event where HTC kind of gave me all the details so I can share them with you in this video. I'll be getting into all the juicy details including the specs, the design, resolution, pricing and release date of both of these headsets along with my first impressions and I'll kind of round up all my thoughts at the end of the video. I hope you find the video useful and without further ado, let's dive in. So let's start off with the new Vive Pro 2, the successor to the original Vive Pro which launched way back in 2018. From a design point of view, not much has really changed. It uses the same head strap design which helps to distribute the weight of the headset across the head and features an adjustable dial at the back. It also has full IPD adjustment catering for an IPD range of 57 to 72 millimeters and an adjustable eye relief button making it easier for those people that wear glasses. It has the same dual pass through cameras and built in headphone design. And whilst on the subject of audio, sadly I've been informed that the Vive Pro 2 features the same microphone setup from the original Vive Pro, which in my opinion was a little lacking. The real changes though are under the hood and come in the form of the new display and lenses. The Vive Pro features a single low persistence dual RGB LCD panel, which provides a resolution of 2448 by 2448 pixels per eye, running up to 120 Hertz with a field of view of 120 degrees. Now this is a huge improvement over the specs of the original Vive Pro and they claim this new display provides a smoother VR experience and eliminates any noticeable screen door effect. The slightly wider field of view is achieved through the new lens design, which is a slight variation of the Fresnel lens we know and love, but they've stacked them in a similar way to the Valve Index so they can achieve the 120 degrees field of view in this new headset. Sadly, we don't have any built-in eye tracking that's still reserved for the HTC Vive Pro Eye Edition. When we compare the specs side by side to other high-end PC VR headsets on the market, you can see the resolution is a noticeable improvement and the Vive Pro 2 is lining itself up to go above and beyond the current king of resolution, which is of course the HP Reverb G2. The new Vive Pro 2 offers an upgrade path for those that already own an original Vive, Vive Pro or Index, as it's fully compatible with both SteamVR 1.0 and 2.0 base stations, along with the original Vive Ones and Index controllers. It's also fully compatible with Vive's own range of accessories, such as the new Vive Facial Tracker, 3.0 trackers, and even the original Vive wireless adapter. You can buy the headset on its own as an upgrade with pre-orders starting on the 11th of May prior to the headset going live on sale on the 4th of June. Vive are offering a special price for pre-orders at 659 British pounds, 749 US dollars, 739 euros for the headset alone. When the headset fully goes on sale, the standard price on release will be 719 British pounds, 799 US dollars or 799 euros. Of course, if you don't already own a Vive, Vive Pro or Index, you'll be able to buy the full kit which will be available later this year on the 4th of August, which will include 2.0 base stations and original Vive Wand controllers. This package will set you back 1299 British pounds, 1399 US dollars, 1399 euros. So it seems Vive are moving away from the Cosmos which had a lackluster launch and are going with the tried and tested Vive Pro platform with an upgraded display and lenses, making it a desirable headset for both the high-end consumer and business markets. For those that already have invested into Steam VR tracking and controllers like me and want the best possible resolution available, it's looking like quite a nice upgrade and hopefully I'll be able to get hands on so I can share my first full impressions with you on the channel very, very soon. But just note that with the higher resolution and higher refresh rates, you'll also need a high-end PC to take full advantage of it. Although HTC did state that they've worked closely with both AMD and Nvidia 
to optimize display stream compression, which is backwards compatible with DisplayPort 1.2, meaning that graphics cards that supported the original Vive Pro will work and see a benefit with the Vive Pro 2. The full system spec requirements will be available soon. So now let's move on to the more interesting headset in my opinion, the Vive Focus 3. It's a standalone VR headset which continues the Vive Focus range, but it's been completely redesigned from the ground up to create what HDC call a no compromises standalone headset. It's got a sleek new look with a matte black finish and glossy front faceplate. It has four cameras, one on each corner for full six degrees of freedom inside out tracking and for tracking the controllers. It doesn't have hand tracking support at launch, although HDC stated that they do plan to add this in the future. It has a robust looking head strap with a similar ergonomic design to the Vive Pro 2, which also features an adjustment dial and a quick release button at the back. In the head strap itself, it has built in open back speakers featuring dual drivers with a special privacy setting so other people around you can't hear what's coming from the headset, which sounds like a pretty interesting feature. Although just like the Vive Pro 2, there is a 3.5 mm headphone jack if you want to utilize your own headphones. It also features a built-in microphone and granular IPD adjustment, catering for an IPD range between 57 and 72 millimeters. In terms of display, it uses the same low persistence dual RGB LCD panel from the Vive Pro 2, which provides a resolution of 2448 by 2448 pixels per eye, running up to 90 Hertz with a field of view of 120 degrees. I have to say, this is seriously impressive for a standalone headset, and this is all powered by an optimized XR2 chipset from Qualcomm. Talking about power, one unique thing about this headset which sets itself apart from the competition is that the Vive Focus 3 has a swappable battery pack, so you never have to worry about running out of juice and having to charge the headset, you can just swap it on the go. And this will be an important feature for business users, although it's not clear at this time if the headset has a small battery to keep applications running whilst the batteries are being swapped out. Along with swappable batteries, the headset also features swappable face and head cushions, which are held in place using magnets, which will be ideal for multi-user situations. With all this tech jammed into the headset, HTC have kept the weight at a minimum by using a lightweight and durable magnesium alloy frame, which they boast is 20% lighter and 500% stronger than traditional plastics. Now, although this headset is designed to be used standalone, HTC have also confirmed that it's compatible with Steam VR when connected to a PC using a USB-C cable. Moving on from the headset to the controllers, we see a familiar inverted tracking ring design, similar to that of the Quest 2, with the same button layout, grip and trigger buttons, along with thumbsticks. The only key difference is that these controllers are charged using USB-C instead of using swappable AA batteries. The headset runs its own home environment called the Vive Reality System 2.0, where businesses can launch their own bespoke applications. When we compare the specs side by side with other standalone headsets, the Vive Focus 3 is definitely setting a new bar as the highest spec standalone headset on the market so far, which makes it even more disappointing that it's only for business use. The Vive Focus 3 will be available from the 24th of June to business customers for 1,060 British pounds, 1,300 US dollars, 1,180 euros, and this includes 24 months of Vive business warranty and service support. This obviously sounds very expensive for us consumers, but just remember that this is for enterprise use and is priced similarly to the competition with both the business version of the Quest 2, which is 799 US dollars with 180 US dollars yearly support license after the first year and the just announced Pico Neo 3 Pro, which will roughly cost around 888 US dollars. I have to say though, I'm really digging the design of the Vive Focus 3. I think it looks like a really sleek headset and it's impressive that it uses the same display technology as the Vive Pro 2, but all built into a standalone headset. I guess they're really leveraging the power of the Qualcomm XR2 chipset. As it is possible to use this headset with Steam VR, I'd really like to see how it performs as a wireless PC VR headset using an application like Virtual Desktop if the developer Guy Godin can port it over to the Vive Focus 3. Hopefully I can get my hands on it in the future to put that functionality to the test and show it off to you all on the channel. Okay, so there we have it. Two brand new VR headsets coming soon from HTC. 
We have the new Vive Pro 2, which looks like an interesting upgrade for high-end PC VR gaming and business applications. And then we have the Vive Focus 3, probably the best standalone VR headset on the market, but sadly, it's just not for us gamers, it's purely for business. Honestly, I was pretty disappointed that we're gonna have to wait a bit longer until we see some viable competition for the Oculus Quest 2, and I'm sure you probably all feel the same way too. I did say to HTC during our meeting that I appreciate they can't compete with Facebook when it comes to price, but a stripped down Vive Focus 3 headset without some of the business features like the swappable battery and magnesium alloy frame and business support package even at twice the price of the Quest 2 would probably be of interest to a market of gamers who want the highest spec standalone headset available and of course don't want to be associated with Facebook. As the Vive Focus 3 uses a similar Qualcomm XR2 chipset as the Quest 2 and also has a similar controller design, I would imagine that porting games over to the system would be a fairly straightforward task for developers. I think the best thing we can do right now is to just tell HTC what we would want as VR gamers and also what we would be willing to pay for it and hopefully they'll listen to the feedback and possibly even bring this Vive Focus 3 headset to consumers in the future. If you are interested in a Quest 2 competitor, it looks like that might come in the form of the Pico Neo 3, which just had its launch event yesterday and it will be coming to the West in the summer, with an array of VR game launch titles we already know and love such as Red Matter, Synth Riders, Eleven Table Tennis and Contractors, just to name a few. If you're interested in learning more about the Pico Neo 3 headset, maybe I can cover it in more detail in a future video. But of course, let me know what you all think in the comments down below. Would you be willing to pay 600 US dollars for a stripped down Vive Focus 3 aimed purely at gamers? Maybe you don't care about the standalone headset and you're more interested in upgrading to the Vive Pro 2. I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Make sure you're subscribed for all my future VR content. And as always, I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.